Hi guys, I'm Hannah Carter and I am a third year veterinary student at Mississippi State University. I'm here today with Dr. Eddie and we're going to discuss why um, I think Mississippi State is an amazing choice as a potential equine practitioner and she's going to give some insight about our clinics and our schedules and our rotations. So, Dr. Eddie. Thanks, Hannah. Um, I appreciate you guys all tuning in today. Uh, as Hannah said, my name is Dr. Allison Eddy. I've been uh, uh, here at Mississippi State for about 13 years. My area of interest is equine surgery, which encompasses all surgical procedures on horses, but also goes into working with lamenesses and orthopedic issues, which is a hugely important in this species. So I actually came up with a few questions to interview Dr. Eddy with, um, and I just wanted to have them broad and let the potential students know maybe what questions I had when I was applying to Mississippi State. So one of the potential questions that I'm going to ask Dr. Eddie and maybe she can give you some insight on is why um, she or potentially students should choose Mississippi State over other schools that may have a higher equine caseload than here. The way that our curriculum is set up, the students spend two years in uh, lecture and lab, and then two years doing clinical rotations or extra or you know, um, extra mural activities, uh, going out to clinics and to different hospitals. Um, having extra time on the rotation to teach is really, I think, a really good model for uh, educating students. If uh, some hospitals start seeing appointments as early as eight, eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning. Um, as you know, since you're on our rotation right now, we spend at least that two hours from eight to 10 teaching you guys and go over in cases. Um, by seeing a, a, a few lower numbers of cases, we can actually spend more time teaching. Um, and I think we get more out of each case as a teaching opportunity. We spend a lot of time with you guys. This is how we do a physical exam. This is how we palpate horses for lameness. This is the steps we go through of watching a, a, a lame horses. I've been in busier academic practices where students learn by observing, but they may not have gotten you know that five or ten minutes to palpate each patient and to talk with the owners. And you know a lot of times the all the history has been done beforehand, and the student never gets to talk to the owner. Um, by seeing not as many cases you guys get a lot more access to working with the cases. So I think that that's a, a bit of an advantage for having, you're not a crazy, crazy day every day where we've seen 20 lame horses. So I, I think it's actually a big advantage for you guys. I definitely agree with you. I know um, coming into equine, I was like, oh, I hope it's really busy. But now that I'm on it, and granted, we have been very busy when I've been on equine the <laughs> past five weeks, but I just feel so lucky that I get to work with each doctor individual and then they get to teach me their specific ways of how they do it. Because like you said, you have enough time between each um, appointment or surgery or whatnot to tell us how you particularly like things or to give us points. And um, I really appreciate that. And I think that's very unique to Mississippi State since we do have a longer rotation on equine as well. So another question that I would like to ask is how long is the equine rotation and are there um, other possibilities like to do an advanced clinical rotation if you just didn't get enough of equine while you're on the six weeks that, that we have or um, like specialty advanced clinical rotations as well. Uh, so Hannah, as you know, our rotations are typically six weeks. Um, there are a couple of rotations per year. They're actually eight weeks to account, account for holiday schedules. Um, for three weeks of that, each student will focus on equine medicine. We'll take the internal medicine cases. And for three weeks, they'll be on the surgery side of the rotation and we'll take you know, surgery and lameness cases. However, the way we're structured, we are an equine service. So you guys are going to get exposed to all of the cases during our, our rounds each day. And you guys are a huge part of your learning opportunity is having to take care of cases, for both medicine and surgery on nights and on weekends. Um, so everybody gets exposed to this wide variety of cases. Um, and this is a much longer rotation than other schools I've been involved with. Um, where I went to vet school, equine medicine surgery was, I believe it was like three weeks. And at halfway, you would split from medicine to surgery. So it was very short. So I think having the extra time 
allow students to a, get very comfortable working with horses um, to figure out this is the OK. I see lots of different horses. I've seen lots of normals. This is abnormal. So this is different. So I think the time spent on the equine rotation is really useful. For those of you eager beavers who want more, that is absolutely an option. Uh, we offer uh, an ACR or advanced clinical rotation for the fourth year students who want to spend more time uh, learning about courses. We it's a little different from the third year. The third year students they're uh, responsible for record keeping for each animal and for their their uh, day to day care and you know feeding uh, medications all that. ACR or fourth year students are freed up from that. So they get to actually see a broader range of cases. They see more cases because they're not as tied up with the care of each individual case. They've already done that. So they get to do something else. What I do when I work with an ACR student is I'm going to meet with them ahead of time and ask them specifically, what do you want to get out of this? Everybody's motivations are different. I've worked with, um, you know, students like you who are mainly interested in equine. They like want to do coursework. Um, and also, what can we teach you? What do you want to know? Um, do you want to practice surgical procedures? Do you want to practice passing tubes? Do you want to uh, see a bunch of more lameness horses? We range for that particular experience. You know, not all students are just going to be equine. I've had a, a student who was going into the military and she's like, you know, I'm going to be a military veterinarian. I have a lot of dog and cat experience. I don't have much horse experience. So I want to get more. So we tailored her rotation to get her the experiences and the techniques down so she's very comfortable going into working in that position. So it's a really nice opportunity to tailor a week or two to what's going to really help that student. So I really enjoy having ACR students and getting to give them what they need to move forward. Awesome. That sounds great. I do know, too, I was looking into one the other day. They offer podiatry lecture or podiatry ACR as well. Yeah, that is right. We are very fortunate here. We have a gentleman who is um, a veterinarian. He's also finished his PhD recently, and he is a, a certified farrier. And he does all of our specialty farrier work, you know, here in house, which is great. Uh, Dr. Ben Neighbors is is a just a fantastic guy to work with. He's an incredibly good, gifted teacher. Loves, loves, loves teaching. Um, all the students get to work with him starting the first year. Uh, he's a big part of the anatomy instruction. And so by the time they get to their third or fourth year, uh, he, they, they have a really good relationship with them already. And he loves teaching students. And I strongly advise anybody who wants to go into equine work to spend time with Dr. Neighbors on that elective rotation. Um, you know, the, the foot is such an integral part of the, the horse structurally and, and if we can help keep their feet in normal healthy structure and orientation we can alleviate a lot of lameness problems um, just through that so uh, that's a great opportunity for anybody and, and you know not all schools have that a lot of schools will have a farrier maybe they come in every once in a while for special cases but they don't necessarily have a farrier on site who can offer that type of instruction awesome yeah i do want to ask you too um that I personally don't know where I'm going to end up after veterinary school. Uh, I would like to obviously end up in an equine practice, but I know a lot of times to get an internship, you normally do an externship there first, and then you get accepted as an intern or apply and as, as an intern instead of um, like doing the match as well. A lot of like small animal um, practices do. Do you think that Mississippi State gives you more times to do externships, particularly in equine, since we do have two years of clinical experience? That, that's a great question, Hannah. I think that's a big advantage of our you know, you, you, um, applicants may have heard of the two by two structure. Essentially, students spend their first two years in uh, lecture and laboratory learning. Um, but the final two years is all hands on. It's it, you know, the clinics that are required through Mississippi State. But also, there's a lot of extra time that a student can really tailor their own experience, um, no matter what that is. You know, uh, if they've decided, you know, into their second years, like, I really want to do horse work. Um, there are a lot of excellent practices, um, both private practice and perhaps some um, academic practices that take externship students for anywhere from one week to three to four weeks. This school offers way more opportunity than most schools. Um, my school was, I had really enjoyed my education, but the first three years were taken up with lab and lecture. So the fourth year 
was tight. You know, we had to really make some strict choices to figure out where we wanted to go. And there wasn't, you know, I, I think I had two external rotations, so two externships. Um, mm -hmm. Many of the equine interest students will have three, four, even five different externships at different places. So if they're looking for a job or an internship, both sides, both the practice that they're going to and the student that are going to the practice, essentially it's a, it's a, a prolonged interview and those students frequently get either job job offers uh, or internship offers at those practices they get to go visit. So it's a uh, it's a you know really good stepping stone for someone who's starting a career to have that opportunity to go out to different practices. So that I think that is uh, you know another big advantage of our program. So we can offer students that flexibility. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. That's great. I actually was able to do two two week externships at the beginning of my third year, and then I plan to do many more in my fourth year. So it's exciting to hear a lot of people get interview and um, or interview internship and job um, applications and um, offers right out of their fourth year. So it's great to hear that you have that experience as well. Um, so another question I would like to know is um, what is the equine classroom like? Do we get um, are the lectures all one clinician or is it broke up by multiple clinicians? Is it just for one semester or both semester? And is if large animal is included in equine? Um, so the education for a veterinary student regarding horses actually begins on day one with anatomy. Uh, you know, the, there are a few veterinary species that are considered core species for education and the horse happens to be one of them, fortunately, as it should be. Um, so anatomy, physiology, all that starts in your first year with those courses. Um, and and you know, the horse is one of the models as a large animal species. Of course, there are other large animal species too. Um, cattle and small ruminants are a big part of the curriculum as well. Uh, during your second year, there's a whole two semester lecture course called equine medicine surgery, which is devoted specifically for horses. Um, there's kind of a parallel course for small animals called um, uh, basically small animal medicine surgery. Both those courses are going to go over diseases and treatment options and 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 health maintenance for body system approaches. So you'll you'll do you know GI and respiratory, skin, ophthalmology, etc. In in those you know, big survey courses, the yeah. biggest difference between the small animal courses and the equine courses are going to be the orthopedic issues. You know, horses are valued highly as athletes. So uh, orthopedic issues, lameness, uh, maintaining them in, in top shape is really important to horse owners. So this school really recognizes that. So the musculoskeletal issues, lameness, and how to work through lameness is a part of the curriculum starting pretty early on in your second year which flows nicely into the third year, which is the clinical rotation. So by the time you guys get to third year, you've got the anatomy, which is key to lameness. You have the lots of instructional videos and you, we talk about how to nerve block. So by the time you get third year, we don't have to explain all that to you. We can just start having you guys do it. You know, it's like day, day one, it's like, okay, we're gonna do a nerve block so to block out this horse's foot. I might have the internal resident do the first one. You can just do the second one. So I think that, broad background sets you up to really come into clinics and start working and, and getting getting practice doing what you've learned the first couple of years. I definitely agree. I've been able to do a lot of hand style and stuff in equine. It's been awesome. Um, so for people who maybe don't have that much horse experience and maybe are nervous about coming into clinics, how much experience do you get just like handling a horse? And should they be concerned about coming into clinics since we do have a long um, rotation about coming in, not even know, say, to halter horse at it or how to pick out a hoof. You know, I tell students that it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter. I don't care what their main interests are. Um, a lot of students will have had minimal or almost no horse experience, and that's okay. It, um, uh, we are very careful of safety. Um, you know, I'm sure you hear us harping on that all the time. You know, nobody gets hurt in equine. We're going to look out for your safety. Use you know, go have two people go uh, handle the horses at all times. So taking care of students is really important. Um, but the students typically come here, they come here knowing that it's a mixed, that it's not gonna be tracking, that everybody has to take care of every species. So understanding that coming in, most of them like, yeah, you know, I, I'm not a big horse person, but I'm happy to learn. Um, 
most of them by the end of the day, they're pleasantly surprised like wow i didn't know horses were so cool really love them i maybe i want to own one now maybe i want to work on them and the the you know and and if they decide that it's like well you know it was a good experience but i don't want to work on them i encourage every student use every rotation to learn how to work through case management you know how do i how do i come through a logical assessment to figure out what the diagnosis is how do i how do i learn what the treatment options are how do i talk to clients you know that's a hugely important and, and something that um you're not going to get in your first and second year but when you get to third year talking to clients taking history uh making phone calls keeping records all of that applies to everything that we do as veterinarians in clinical practice so you know whether you want to work on exotics or you know uh, cattle it doesn't matter those skills are going to be learned throughout and when our students graduate they have those skills in spades compared to a lot of other other practices or um, a lot of other schools you know our graduates typically are hired initially with a higher salary than graduates from other schools because the practitioners know that they'll be ready to practice so you know when, when students are like oh, i've never touched a horse before i'm a little nervous i'm like it's fine don't care we're going to take care of you we're going to make sure that you get an opportunity to learn and, and reinforce your physiology and the other skills that pertain to all species um but a lot of people are like yeah it's, it was really fun i enjoyed it so it, i think that it works out well for the students in all disciplines to come through our rotation. I agree. I've had so many experiences where I've had friends because they know they're like, oh, Hannah, the horse person, um, she wants to do horses. And so they are like, I'm so scared to go into equine or I really don't like horses. And then one of my friends texted me the other day who was on the rotation before me and she said, oh my gosh, I really want to own a horse now. This is the best ever. And I was like, I told you, yeah. horses are great. <laughs> horses are great. And people don't know that, you know, they see them out in the field and they don't know that they have lots of personality and they're, you know, they're, they can be very affectionate. They have, you know, different likes and dislikes. And so they're, they're a really fun species. Yes. And I do feel like on equine, you do get to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time since, um, which I don't know if all other schools are like this, but you are a student and you're assigned to a specific patient. So you get that specific patient for X amount of days. Like I had a patient for um, 20 days straight. And so I got to know him very, very well and grew very fond of him. And so um, I think that on e the way our curriculum allows us to really interact with those patients. And like you said, learn that they do have personalities and they are very affectionate species. Um, but it is funny to hear people come in and then leave and be like, oh my gosh, this is so great. <laughs> I hear it over and over. You know, I, yeah, I keep asking, I'll talk to students and ask, you know, how did rotation go? And, and many, 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 many times they'll tell me that I had a lot more fun than I thought I would. I learned a lot more and I really like horses now. So most of them find it to be really enjoyable, even though they're a little nervous at the start. Yes, for sure. Um, so I know a lot of other programs they track so you will if you have specifically just equine or large animal experience you would track that way or to small animals if that's what you desire um what do you think is an advantage and a disadvantage of tracking and not tracking since mississippi state we don't track we do all of our clinical rotations are the same for each student yeah it's a big topic and you know in educating veterinary students you know is it better to track it's like if they know from day one that they only want to do horses is it okay to just have them just do horse work I, I worked in those type of educational um settings when i did my residency at uc davis which is a great school they tracked aggressively and so if you didn't want to touch a horse you never had to touch a horse if you didn't want to touch a dog you never touched a dog um yes they learned a ton about that specific area but they missed the opportunity to find out about other areas you know we've just had a you know talked about all the students are like I'm surprised how much I like horses. They hadn't had to work on a horse. They would never have had that idea. And, you know, the, the future's wide open. They might end up in a, you know, they might start off in a urban setting where they're working dogs and cats. And then maybe they're in a more rural community where, hey, I really need to work on horses to because it's going to benefit the practice I'm working with and, and they're comfortable doing it. Um, there's so much ability with this profession to go back and forth to focus on different areas of being a veteran that I think having that background is really helpful. 
Um, because we're a you know, two by two school, there's plenty of opportunities we talked about already to focus during your externships to, to do an ACR. So, you know, the, the dedicated, you know, horse person, dog person, cat, exotics, it doesn't matter what your focus is. You get the broad base foundation, which can take you everywhere. And on top of that, you get to kind of pick and choose and you almost track yourself. So it's not formally tracking, but you have the opportunity to do as much as within your discipline that you want to do as many of the schools that actually track more aggressively and only have one year of clinical rotation. So I, I think of it as actually a huge advantage. You know, um, your clients are going to expect you to know about a lot of species and you know, they're going to ask you about your dog. You know, you're working on the horse. They're going to ask you about the dogs. Uh, you're working on their cats. They're going to ask you about their cattle herd. Um, you know, in their times, you'll have to defer to someone who does that more frequently, but they're going to want and expect you to have very basic information. And at one point I was, um, in private practice during equine practice. Uh, but it was great to be able to take care of the dogs and the cats on the farm as part of a farm call. And I said, Hey, you know, if they're found something wrong, if they're physical as abnormalities, they're going to send them into the, to the clinic, but I'm happy to do their annual vaccinations and deworming and basic care on the farm. And it's a huge services client. So if they had to round up all the dogs and cats and bring them in, it's a, you know, would it take them half a day to do that? So I, I think having that experience is still what's expected from a veterinarian. Yeah, that's a really great point. And I think as a veterinary student, I have to think to myself too, um, A, I have to take the NAVLI and yes. that is over all species. And so it's important for me to know at least the big points about all the species, even though maybe I do want to focus on my equine. And two, like you said, maybe one day, um, like God forbid, if I get hurt or something and I'm not allowed to, you know, practice on larger animals anymore, I still have that degree to back me up and the clinical experience to be able to practice in a different setting. So that is all of the questions that I have um, for you, Dr. Eddie. Thank you so much for taking out time of your busy schedule to meet with us. And I know that the prospective students will love hearing from you. You're always such a great insight to the clinic and life questions in general. I know we've had multiple <laughs> discussions, but I'm like, what do I do? And you're always so helpful. Um, so thank you for tuning in with us. I hope that COVID goes away and I will be able to see you all soon. And good luck in your applications. And I hope that. Um, this year brings great joy to all of you.